We've talked about some of the greatest fighters in heavyweight divisions in the history of boxing. David Tua, the undisputed Iron Mike. But one name that constantly goes under the radar is Lennox Lewis. I mean, this man is a beast. Not only did he defeat Iron Mike Tyson, but he went on to defeat some of the biggest names in boxing history. And he did it with style, too. So, today, we'll be looking at some of Lennox Lewis's best knockouts. On July 12, 1991, Lennox Lewis met with 40-year-old Mike Weaver, a veteran. It was a fight between youth and experience. The first opening rounds went to Lewis as he was the better aggressor, fighter, and boxer, trading heavy hits to the veteran boxer's body and face. The fight warred on until the sixth round, where a right cross to the face decided the winner of the match as Weaver was sent sprawling across the canvas. It was Halloween night and an unbeaten Lennox Lewis met with one of the most lethal fighters in the game, Donovan Razor Ruddick, to secure his first shot at the WBC title. In the first round, Ruddick suffered a perfectly knuckled cross that stunned him to the ground. The crowd cheered as he tried to get back on his feet, barely meeting the end of the referee's count. And soon enough, he was back and allowed to advance to the second round. Things got even more heated in the second round as both fighters exchanged blow for blow. However, Lewis had the upper hand, driving Ruddick into the corner as a thunderous beating sent him to the canvas again. Still, Ruddick stood up before the end of the call, ready for more punishment. And as soon as he stood up, he was back on the floor again. This time, a carefully placed power punch to the back of his head puts him in his place for good, and the fight was over. This contest was Lennox Lewis. Well, maybe those 19 rounds with Mike Tyson had taken something away from some fabulous punches written here. He just never gave Ruddick a chance. He heard him early and he kept on him. And Ruddick's legs never really came. And also, a man with such experience, Ruddick jumped up the second time he went down very, very quick. So it proves he just didn't know where he was. Just give us your thoughts on that because nobody expected a finish like that. Well, Billed as the Battle of Britain on October 1st, 1993 at Cardiff Arms Park in Wales, Lennox Lewis was making the second defense of his WBC title. And Frank Bruno, who was fighting in his third world title bout, his two previous title fights having been unsuccessful. In the seventh round, Lewis lands a brutal left hook to Bruno's chin. The stunned challenger just stood there as he took in the series of heavy hands, Lewis dashed at him like a punching bag. He was defenseless. It was only until the referee pulled Lewis away, the match stopped. a ragdoll Bruno and there was no way back from there no way at all you may be watching the last moments in the career of one of Britain's most popular fighters 
but he, he, you've got to give all respect to him. He, he put up a marvellous performance. He was so focused, he really went for it. And if this is he swung some, then he did a great job, and it's a great fight to go out on. He showed nothing but courage. But Lennox Lewis, in, in the end of the day, a fabulous performance. The way he finished the job was quite brilliant, Lewis. But take your hat off too to Frank Bruno, because every time he has challenged for the world title... On October 7, 1995, top heavyweights Lennox Lewis and Tommy Morrison fought for Morrison's IBC title at the Atlantic City Convention Center. The taller Lewis established his jab in the first two rounds and regularly kept Morrison on the receiving end of his longer blows. Morrison's left eye had begun to swell by the fourth, making his condition even more precarious, and by the fifth, it was clear that he had no hope of winning. Lewis landed Morrison with a monumental uppercut that sent him down again at the end of the round. As a further series of jabs knocked Tommy out again. The bout was interrupted by the referee after a devastating left hook knocked down Morrison. Many expected this fight to be a back-and-forth battle between two of boxing's greatest heavyweights, but Lewis smashed the giant pole inside a round, making it one of the most lopsided title battles in the history of the sport. Both boxers seemed very confident in their skills. Lewis was the more aggressive fighter as he pushed Galata into a defensive position. After an overhand right landed flush, he was in trouble. Several more punches followed, and Galota was on the floor, fighting to stay awake. But just as he regained his footing, Lewis emphatically finished the job with a series of uppercuts and painful hits, and soon Galata was down on the floor again as the referee called the match to an end. It's over! Galata is hammered by Lennox Lewis. Right down the middle. He's pawing with it. Left hook rocks him back with straight right on the chin. Another right. That's where Galata's out of it, right there. Down for the first time. You can only imagine to have just cut down Andrew Galata that quick in the first round. Remember what Riddick Bow hit Galata with everything, and nothing like this occurred. Terrific shots here by Lennox Lewis. He will be boxing's version of Mr. October. You got that right. Lennox Lewis looks like he's not only beating down Galata, he's beating down everybody who ever doubted him in the ring. Another fight that was just as entertaining as the title was a fury between Lennox Lewis and Shannon Briggs. After the sound of the bell, Lewis charged across the ring to meet Briggs like a bulldozer. The attack 
was followed by an overhand right by Briggs. A more cautious Lewis then began stalking, stepping into Briggs behind his long jab. Then out of nowhere, Briggs caught Lewis with the left hook that sent him reeling into the ropes. And before he could get his balance, Briggs was back on him, flailing away. Styling in the punches. And we have a real upset, possibly. Lewis is all over the place. He's caught with another left hand. His defense was really badly open then. Only seven. By round three, Lewis seemed to have regained his composure and peppered Briggs with a piston jab, catching him twice with right hands to Briggs' jaw. Lewis here looks as if he's just moved up a gear at the start of the third round. Almost as if he's saying to Briggs. Briggs ran into a flurry of headshots at the start of round four, grabbing the top rope to keep from falling, and then ran into another flurry that sent him reeling backward his knees bending. The ropes kept him from going down. Very menacing. Briggs is really staggered by a right hand. His legs stiffen. He's all over the place. The end could be near here. But Lewis, smelling the end, was on top of him again, and this time, a solid right to the head put Briggs on his back. Don't lose concentration and keep the pressure on. Big right hand. Big chopping right hand. Shannon Briggs, I don't think, will get through this round. He looks all out. Frank Cappuccino will give him the mandatory eight. Looks into his eyes, but Briggs has next to nothing left, I fancy, here. And Lewis, cool, clinical, trying to think his way into the finish, which must be imminent now. It looked dodgy early on. Briggs will perform a miracle if he can get through this round. Lewis has to look for the right punches, find the gaps here, break him down. Caught with a count. When Briggs returned for round five, and Lewis was punishing him now with the jab, with uppercuts and combinations that Briggs couldn't avoid. His time, Lewis, like a lion waiting in the long then took from field, caught Briggs, and sent him down once more. TV curtains for Shannon Briggs. He surely this will he he's going to try you know look at that that is miraculous he looked out the crowd are on their feet but Briggs managed to get up at the count of eight and tried to fight back but couldn't he went down again and this time the referee waved the bout over he's defying boxing logic almost by still being in there but you can give Shannon Briggs a medal for bravery after this down he goes again, and this time Cappuccino says... Flat on his back, his arms outstretched. It was a, a beautifully timed right hand, right on the, the side of the head. Over he goes, and at that point, you would never expect him to get up. But get up he did, miraculously, only to take more. Second knockdown, another right hand. And now he's under pressure. I think this is the finish. Lewis bombarding him with shots here. Unanswered punches, and then a big left hook. He misses. It wasn't a punch that last. The too big, it was called. It was a fight between two very huge hitters, both with a lot of experience and inexperience between them. Lewis knocked down Grant three times in the first round. Lewis began the second round by attacking Grant. Grant had no choice but to lean down on his own weight after a missed Lewis jab, 
And it was the end of the challenger as Lewis winged another right uppercut that knocked Grant out for good. Moment. A scintillating end to the great fighter and an epic win for Lennox Lewis. Here. Well, this is one of those games where four minutes of action can be better, better than an hour of inaction. Ooh, over the top, he's holding him and he lands that uppercut. Absolutely right. Got away with holding the head while he landed the uppercut. Grant shouldn't have been, should not have been down there. Ooh, that hurts. Lennox Lewis is a puncher. In the first three rounds of the rematch between Rockman and the former champion, Lewis showed off his mastery of the left jab. And hammered by power punches, bleeding in South Africa, still in the center of the ring for the moment. Lewis trying to keep his head on Lennox Lewis, who is especially defensive. In the fourth round, Rockman was so distracted by Lewis's left jab that Lennox was able to convert it into a powerful left hook, which was swiftly followed by a right cross that must have felt like a jackhammer as Rockman's head bounced off the canvas. While the referee counted to 10, Rockman struggled to stand up by the count of nine before finally falling face first to the ground. Another stunning victory for the reigning champion. Everything was out in the open. That's the way you want to fight a puncher. And he set it all up with the left hand by firing aggressively, keeping his left hand in Rockman's face, mixing it. The match between Lennox Lewis and Francois Botha was a heavyweight professional boxing match contested between WBC, IBF, IBO, and lineal champion to retain Lewis's heavyweight titles. The first round started in quite a fashionable manner with both players standing strong, but in the closing minutes of the round, Lewis staggered Botha with an overhand right to his chin. <laughs> Near the end of the second round again, a left-right, left-right combination by Lewis put both the through the ropes in Lewis's corner. It was a pretty disturbing scene to watch. Both the had to crawl back into the ring, and when the referee waved his arms after 2 minutes 39 seconds of the round, both the did not protest. Larry O'Connell said, The fight was originally scheduled for April 6, 2002 in Las Vegas. However, Nevada refused to grant Tyson a license after a press conference brawl between Lewis and Tyson. Several other states refused Tyson a license before Memphis finally bid $12 million in order to host the fight. It was the highest grossing event in pay-per-view history, generating $106.9 million from 1.95 million buys in the U.S. until it was surpassed by De La Hoya versus Mayweather in 2007. Son rôle peut être très important au milieu. La pire rapide de Memphis va faire exploser. C'est parti. In the opening rounds, both fighters were about evenly matched, exchanging jabs in the first two rounds before Tyson connected a few blows and a left hook to Lewis's jaw in a few minutes. The tissue, it's a disaxe. Oh, it's a 
C'était lâché un moment. Oui, ouais. simplement là, avec euh, le bras avant. A installé Tyson ouais. Chisa pour rythme. Et pour l'instant, c'est Tyson euh, qui entreprend. C'est lui euh, qui est plus actif. Ouais, il touche avec son direct du gauche alors qu'il est plus petit. Attention, là, attention là, Wuko. The contender replied back with a series of powerful combinations that left a cut above Tyson's right eye in the third. Tyson hit the canvas in the fourth, but only for the referee to rule it as a slip. By then, Lewis had already seized control and gradually ascended both in power, skill and confidence. Iron Mike struggled to stay alive throughout the fight. Another devastating series of powerful combinations by Lewis, Tyson was sent to the floor and barely managed to get back on his feet as he was sent to the canvas again not long after. Following a powerful right cross blow to the face, a clean knockout. Dans le cœur des Français, regardez. Ça, ça va encore à peu près, mais celui-là, cet super gut gauche à la pointe de menton, c'est une merveille. Tyson fait l'ascenseur. Il ne veut pas tomber, il ne veut pas céder. Il ne veut pas céder, mais il fait l'ascenseur quand même. Et maintenant, on va voir les stockades, malheureusement, pour Tyson. Voilà, crochet droit, pointe du menton, alors que Tyson amorcé, lui, une attaque. Ça veut dire que le poids de Tyson est venu s'empaler sur la droite de Lennox Lewis. Le résultat, vous l'avez eu avec Nicolas du Monde, parce qu'on avait très peur de ce combat. Mais on sent, euh, je vais dire presque grandi. Bon, Mike, il a été. That's all for today's video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to tell us about your favorite knockout in the comments section below. See you in the next video with some interesting content. Until then, stay tuned.